What's up guys, Dan here from Kilowatt Auto. So Tesla recently announced the ability for current owners to upgrade to enhanced autopilot instead of full self-driving. And full self-driving as it stands right now in September of 2020 costs $8,000, whereas enhanced autopilot would only be $4,000. So in today's video, I wanna take a look at the features that are included in both enhanced autopilot and full self-driving, break down their effectiveness, and also give you my opinion on whether or not the upgrade is worth it. Before we get started though, if you're interested in learning more about the Model 3 ownership experience or Teslas in general, make sure you get subscribed and also check out my channel trailer, which I have linked in the description down below. As always, I also post my referral code down there. So if you decide you'd like to order a Tesla, you can use that referral code and that'll get you 1000 free supercharging miles. So the first feature that's included in both enhanced autopilot and full self-driving is navigate on autopilot. And I've actually used this feature extensively. So I'll link some videos down below where you can check that out. And also if you take a look at my playlist, the road to full self-driving, that'll give you a much more in-depth view of the features that are included with navigate on autopilot. But basically the way that system works is it's designed to take you from on-ramp to off-ramp without any driver intervention whatsoever. So it'll perform lane changes for you to pass slower moving traffic, and then it'll also maneuver the car to take exit ramps when you're approaching your appropriate exit. And this system only works when you have a destination programmed into the car's GPS, so it's actively navigating you towards that final destination. The next feature that's included in both enhanced autopilot and full self-driving is automatic lane changes. And this is something that's only active when navigate on autopilot is active. So it's going to automatically change lanes to pass slower moving traffic. And this feature I've been a little bit critical of in the past only because I've found that the driver etiquette is not really up to par as to how I would personally drive my car. And what I mean by this is that a lot of times the Tesla will move into the passing lane to pass other slower moving traffic and then take an extensive amount of time to move out of the passing lane or just flat out not move out of the passing lane whatsoever. And in Tesla's most recent software update, they actually added the option for you to select whether or not you want the car to move out of the passing lane. So I'm not sure if they got a lot of complaints about this in the past and have sort of fine tuned the software to better understand and interpret these types of passing situations. Regardless though, I have not used this feature too extensively since the latest update, so I can't comment on whether or not this has gotten better. The third feature which is included in both full self-driving and enhanced autopilot is going to be auto park. This is something that I really don't ever use only because I don't park anywhere uh, where there's parallel parking spots. The car will sometimes detect perpendicular parking spots and will attempt to auto park there. But again, this is not something that I really use. I'll just park the car on my own. Occasionally the car actually does recognize my garage as a parking spot and I have attempted to use this in the past. However, the car really is not equipped yet to handle this type of situation. It'll usually get me about halfway into the garage before it either stops or makes me take over because it's getting way close to the walls on either side of the car. Summon is gonna be the fourth and final feature included with enhanced autopilot. So this is, in my opinion, more of the gimmicky feature to both of these software packages. And basically it allows you to call your car from a spot in a parking lot to your current position uh, within a relatively short distance. So if you're walking out of a grocery store, you have your arms full with bags and it's pouring down rain, you can pull out your phone open up the Tesla app, hit summon, and the car will come up front to pick you up. However, in my experience using this feature, the car is extremely conservative, especially moving through parking lots where there's a lot of cars coming in and out and pedestrians along the side of the road. So it's really not a practical feature to use because in most cases, the car has either gotten stuck or stopped moving because there's just way too much going on for it to assess and effectively handle that type of situation. So those are gonna be the four features that wrap up Enhanced Autopilot. And then the only additional feature that's listed currently with full self-driving is gonna be traffic light and stop sign control. And this just allows the car to respond to traffic lights and stop signs. So it'll automatically stop for yellow and red lights and also at stop signs. And then it'll proceed through traffic light intersections as long as there's a leading car in front of it or through stop sign intersections when you press down on the accelerator or down on the driver's stock to let the car know that it's safe to proceed through the intersection. One feature that's not listed here on the enhanced autopilot list or the full self-driving list is speed limit sign recognition. And this is the feature that was most recently added in Tesla's latest software update. So I'm not sure if this is something that's included in general with standard autopilot or if it's something only specific to full self-driving. Regardless though, that is something to keep in mind that it is another feature that is available. 
So before we get into my opinion on whether or not you should upgrade to either enhanced autopilot or full self-driving, it is important to know that I do have full self-driving and I did buy it when I ordered the car. So that's just something to keep in mind. One other thing that I think is important to understand is that both of these software packages, whether you go with full self-driving or enhanced autopilot are learning programs. So they're not gonna be perfect. So if you are going to be bothered by the car making mistakes or flat out not being able to respond to certain situations after after you put down the $4,000 or $8,000 for full self-driving, I definitely would recommend not buying it then because again, the system and software as it stands currently is not perfect. The car does make lots of mistakes and it does require the driver to be very engaged with the driving process whenever autopilot is activated. So I do think that Enhanced Autopilot is worth the $4,000 based on the features that are listed and included with that software package. So I have a couple of other videos that I've done in the past, especially on long distance road trips. So I'll link those up above here if you wanna check those out. But Navigate and Autopilot has been absolutely invaluable on longer distance road trips. Uh, it keeps you very safe along your route. It maps exactly where you need to stop the charge. It performs all the lane changes for you and it just eliminates the driver fatigue that typically results from three, four, 500 plus mile road trips. So honestly, I don't think you can go wrong choosing between enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. If you're looking to get some more experience with the advanced features that come with autopilot, in addition to what comes standard with the car, I think Enhanced Autopilot will provide a good taste of that. And my assumption would be that later on, if you want additional features, you could upgrade then to full self-driving for the additional $4,000. It's also important to keep in mind that as of right now, Tesla has announced that they are on schedule to release a feature complete system sometimes in December to all Tesla vehicles currently on the road. So at that point, it would be my guess that the price is probably going to increase for full self-driving. So bottom line, if you're into autonomous driving, you can't go wrong buying either enhanced autopilot or full self-driving, and you should go with whatever works best for your budget. But it's important to remember to keep an open mind Full self-driving, autopilot, auto steer, all the features that we talked about today are still learning programs. So the car is going to make mistakes and it's important to remain engaged while using autopilot so you can take over when the car is unsure or makes an error in a difficult situation. I can tell you that from my own personal experience, I don't regret buying full self-driving and over the past nine or so months that I've been using it, I've had a very positive experience. But this is actually gonna bring us to the end of today's video. If you found it useful, make sure you hit the like button so others have an easier time finding it. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.